Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV Ultima. Today, I am grinding for pink tails, and I figured that I would just pretty much show you my methodology of how to do this. Uh, basically, I've already gotten one pink tail, and I want to get three more uh, for a total of four pink tails and four adamant armors. And the quickest and easiest way to do this, I have found out, is pretty much... Um, I turned my emulation speed all the way up to 9, then I mapped my R2 button to um, be A, or confirm, as well as fast forward to get it, like, in supersonic speed. And then I put the siren up top, and I put a blank spot underneath it. Um, and basically, the reason for that is because um, after the battle, I'm going to go into my item menu, and I'm going to look... And the pink tail should be in that blank spot if I got it. Um, if I got anything else, like, say, a lunar gem or something like that, and that took up the, um, the blank spot there, then I would scroll down because, you know, you never know. You could get a lunar gem and a pink tail. You just gotta check. So once you get the pink tail, you then need to leave and go to the adamant grotto and get the adamant armor. Do not get all your pink tails at one time. You need to do it one at a time. I know it's highly obnoxious, but if you go there and you have your pink tails stacked, that little asshole down at the Adamant Grotto is going to take all your pink tails and only give you one adamant armor. So do not do that. Um, with this method, I was able to get all of my pink tails in under an hour. I was averaging about one pink tail every 10 minutes. So hopefully this works out for you, and remember, you only need four pink tails, so keep that in mind. Once I get those pink tails, I'm going to meet you for our regularly scheduled program. Okay, it took me roughly an hour or so, but now, not everybody, but four of us have adamant armors. The only person who does not have an adamant armor is Rydia, who has a Minerva instead. But don't worry, she'll get one soon enough. And the reason for this isn't because of any of the bosses that Final Fantasy IV uh, has installed for us. It's because of the bosses that the hack has in store for us, like the super bosses that we have to deal with. Um, I've honestly never gotten the, um, what is it? The, um, I can't think. The Adamant Armors. I've never gotten the Adamant Armors before in any of the times that I've ever played this game because I didn't think it was necessary, and it's so obnoxious to get them, so I just didn't bother. Um, however, here, for, you know, let's actually uh, use Nuke against this guy. Here, I figured, you know, I need it. I have tried some of the super bosses that are available for me right now, and they just slaughter me. So I figured I'll take any advantage that I could possibly get, anything in the book, and, uh, hopefully use that to my advantage. So here we have, um, let's see, let's go ahead and use a ninja star. Here we have the plague boss, which is essentially a timed boss. Um, and you really can only beat it if you're at a certain level, essentially. Um, so just use all your most powerful attacks. Don't use any kind of buffs or debuffs or anything else like that. You don't want to waste any time. And um, just go all out against the plague, because if the time runs out, yo dead. And you don't want that. Well, there we are. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Oh, we get a lunar gem, lovely. But more importantly, we get the holy spear. Sweet! So this is a uh, great weapon for Kane. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that on him. Yeah, really raising up his attack power there. Um, and allowing him to attack floating enemies as well, so that's kind of nice. Let's move on. What do we have here? Uh-oh. Ribbons? I want ribbons! But in order to get the ribbons, we have to fight the Lunar Swords. Oh, these guys are kind of a pain. Okay, so let's see. First things first, we're going to be jumping. And let's see what I want to do now. Uh, with edge, I actually want to cast this new spell called Ninja, and you'll see what it does. You'll see. 
Rosa is going for Ultima. And Lydia, I want her to go for Medio, of all things. Or Medio, or whatever it is you want to call it. Meteor, it doesn't really matter. Whatever. The reason for this is because you do not want to summon um, against them. Because if you do, they will just vitalize themselves. It's really annoying. Um, and they would just pretty much heal themselves. So, don't do that. Um, once I've gotten a fast on my fighters, let's use Atom Bomb for some nice damage there. Yeah, fast on everyone is always so good, speeding up their attacks. Um, Cecil is actually going to be my healer for this fight. If you need healing, I really kind of don't. But I figured, eh, why not? Because Rose's Ultima is going to be dealing, you know, 10,000 damage to both of them, whereas Cecil's regular attack would deal, eh, four to five thousand damage only to one of them. So, Rose is just a lot more powerful in this fight. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's go ahead again with Atom Bomb. You really want to use that because, as you can see, they love casting wall on themselves and then reflecting viruses back onto you, which is really obnoxious. It's not hard unless they, you know, focus their viruses on one person over and over and over again. It's just kind of annoying. Uh, we seem to be doing okay as far as HP is concerned, so Cecil can join in the fun with attacking. And, yeah, do you see what I mean about Cecil's attack power? It's not all that hot right now compared to what Rose is able to deal out. Okay, I can't really use another atom bomb. I guess we can go with an explosive. Give that a shot. Okay, so Cecil's probably going to have to heal up Riddy. I don't want her dying. Not that she needs the experience, I just don't want her dying. <laughs> I really just want her able to use the Medio spell. Why not? Uh, let's get a Cure 3 going on her. So the Lunasaurs have 45,000 HP. They are weak to fire if you want to exploit that weakness, but I wouldn't bother. Oh, wow, got two Dragon Gauntlets. Hey, hey. Well, Cecil, Kane already has the Dragon Gauntlet. Cecil already has, um, Crystal stuff. Let's see if this is anything. Okay, no, it's completely worse than the Protect Rings there. And here we get two ribbons, which the girls can equip. Um, they've had gold pins for, like, the entire game, so it's nice for them to finally get an upgrade. Uh, let's see. From the ribbon to the gold pin, it is going to, um increase their defense. It's going to lower the magical attack power, but who cares, especially for Rosa. Now, for Riddy, you can really see the main thing with the ribbon. So, um, as you can see, it raises her to be immune to just about everything. So, look at the immunities now, and look at him now with the ribbon. The reason why you didn't see that on Rosa is because the adamant armor also gives protection from just about everything. Um, so... At this point, everybody has protection from pretty much all status ailments, so that's kind of nice. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the save point, use a cabin, and meet you right here. I'm all rested up, and now let's continue on. And while that was the last save point in the original version of the game, that's no longer the case. There's plenty of save points in here, the Lunar Core. And from this point, there's going to be a lot of white dragons! No, there's just gonna be a lot of boss fights in general. Um, and what I've decided to do for these boss fights, because there's a lot of them, like, it's kind of crazy how many there are. There's the normal boss fights that, you know, are just in the game in general, and then there are the added additional boss fights um, from this hack. And there's quite a bit! And the Lunar Core is also quite changed up. There's a lot more added floors and secret passages and treasures and things like that um, that weren't in the original game. So yeah, a lot of changes happen here. Remember when I reviewed this hack and I said, you know, 90% of the game is the same? Well, this is the last 10% where it's really changed up quite a bit. Um, so what I've decided to do in order to get through these boss fights so we're not stuck in the Lunar Core forever is to um, pretty much 
fast forward through the boss fights. I'm going to be putting them on double speed and then going over my strategy during post-commentary. Basically, I'm going to be recording it silently and then going back and doing a voiceover, recounting my strategy. And I've done this in other LPs before, so this is nothing new. So let's take this guy on. The Blade of Black. Is this the Mist Dragon again? Yikes! No, it's Leviathan's cousin, the evil Ogopogo. And, uh, yeah, he opens up with dual tsunamis, which can murder your party if you're low level. I would not be entering this place until you're a level 60. Minimum, it is imperative for at least, you know, fighting these bosses and everything. Now, you might think that the Ogopogo is weak to lightning. You know, he looks just like Leviathan, and he was, but... You would be wrong. He has no weaknesses whatsoever, so just hit him with non-elemental damage, like Bahamut. However, he will counter every spell that you cast on him with Blaze. Not that that really matters. Um, just have Rosa cure every round. Honestly, there really isn't all that much curing to be had here, so if you want her to join in the, to join in the fray using her Ultima attack or Holy or something like that, you're... Feel free to. You'll be fine. This is just a regular boss. This isn't a hack boss. So it's relatively simple here compared to what we've seen so far. That being said, the Ogopoke has 50,000 HP. So he will be taking quite a bit of time to go down. But he's nothing that you can't handle. There he goes. Well, it took him out easily enough. I'll get a crystal ring. Awesome. And the Massamoon. Sweet. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. Let's see if the crystal ring's any better than the protect ring. Uh. Uh. Let's see. The crystal gives the same immunity as it looks like. Um. It gives a little bit more actual defense and a little bit more evasion as well, so I... But then again, I mean, this has 80 stamina. I think I'm going to keep him on the Protect Ring, actually. Let's see what you guys have. Okay, so instead of this Rune Ring, let's do the Crystal Ring here, definitely for her. That's a major upgrade. And then the next thing is for Edge. Let's see. It's time to get rid of this sword. We've had this for quite some time. Yeah, that's nice. 200 attack power. Yes, please. And let's move on with life. Let's see, over here... Okay, there's nothing over there. What's this little toad guy or something? Or turtle guy, I guess is what I'm looking for. Kind of reminds me of Cagnazzo. Oh, it's Ultima. That's new. From Final Fantasy VI. He has the exact same speech and everything. For boss time! Oh wow, they actually even imported the sprite and everything, wow. Yeah, Ultima opens with Ultima. That's so much fun. So Cecil is actually going to be on somewhat of backup healing duty because then he also likes to use Medio. That's just great. Yeah, and then Kane died. That's lovely too. Looks like I'm going to need a life too for that. So first things first, have Edge use his ninja spell to give fast to everyone have Rydia cast Bahamut um, against him for max damage. One thing to keep a note, he will counter every single spell that you cast on him, no matter what kind of spell it is, if it's a white, a white magic spell, black magic spell, caller spell, doesn't matter, he will counter it with Nuke. Nuke is only single target though, so it's not that big of a deal. Once you have Edge use his ninja spell, then have him throw his ninja shurikens. Uh, Kane should be focusing or jumping, it doesn't matter. Um, I think I have him focusing at this point. Cecil, he's either healing or he is just attacking. He can't really deal all that much damage to him though. At this point, Ultima will counter pretty much everything that you do to him with Whirlwind. So only cast spells that will actually count, such as Ultima or Bahamut. Don't worry about anybody else's attacks. Just have Cecil heal. Kane's on support. Edge is on support at this point. Uh, whenever he gets to do his pissy boss mode. But we got him. Well, that got a little bit hairy towards the end, but eh, we got him all the same. Awesome. 
That's it? A glass helmet? Are you kidding me right now? We did all that for this crappy-ass glass helmet? Oh, come on. You've got to be kidding me. It lowers his magical defense. It raises his regular defense. Like, it lowers his... Ugh, this is a piece of shit. Um, maybe it's better on edge? Replacing the dragon helmet? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I guess. I'll put it on him and we'll see. I just healed up real fast after all that. Because the monsters in here are pretty hard and you don't want to go into any fights without being at max HP. You get a whistle if you want to call the fat chocobo. Conversely though, you could also just run from all the random encounters in here, which is normally what I do. Um, because at this point the encounters have so much HP that they're really just not worth messing with. They just take way too long. So if you're wondering why I'm not really showing the encounters anymore, it's because I'm just running from them. Over here we get a save point. Awesome. And let's see, we got some other stuff that I wanted to use. The Soma Drop. Again, those goes to Rosa. A Gold Seed. Uh, Rydia. Okay, get back to who? Her. And let's see, let's go ahead and use our cabin. And I might as well make a save while I'm here. It would be remiss for me not to. Okay, let's keep on going. We have time. I think we have time for one more boss. We got a lunar gem, not that I'm really going to turn those in, but they're there. And let's see what we got here. Oh, Hyperion Sword. Hmm. I wonder... Also, at this point, we got that whistle in that chest back there. Let's use that. So that's not a um, sound that you hear all the time. While I have the uh, fat check up here, I want to grab some cursed rings. Um, I'm also going to grab, let's see what else I want here. Might as well grab another whistle. Um, where is it that I'm looking for? I'll grab the Avenger Sword just in case I want it. Um, oh, and another Hyperion sword. Yeah, those swords are actually halfway useful here. Everything else, I think I am good, so let's just give him some junk that I don't need. Um, you know, this lunar gem, these caliburns, the gold pins, all this crap that I don't need. Just stick on him. And I think with that, I am good. Okay, so I am healed up. Let's do this. Whoa! For boss time against AI MK1 and his attackers and defenders. Because I love this fight so much. Yeah, I hated it in the Tower of Babel when I was a kid. It haunted me in my dreams, and here we are again with it. And guess what? It's not the last time. We're going to have to see him again tomorrow. Yay! Yeah. Okay, so remember back in that save room, there was a crystal there, and it gave us a clue on how to handle him. Basically, what it said was you need to use non-elemental damage against him. And in the chest before, we got that Hyperion sword, and that was kind of a, a gimme to you, as that is the most powerful non-elemental weapon that Cecil or Kane can equip at this point. Um, even if you use something with a holy element or a dark element, it will still only deal one damage to him. So that's why I called the Fat Chocobo, that's why I got the other Hyperion Sword, so now Kane and Cecil both have that equipped. Um, I'm having Rydia pretty much just use Nuke every single turn, because you don't want to kill the attacker bot there. You want, um, that one to stay alive, because if it dies, then the AI will kill your party. Pretty much just use instant death moves and you'll be screwed. So don't do that. Instead just use nuke, um, have Kane, Cecil, and Edge deal the most damage to it by jumping, focusing, attacking, throwing items, all that kind of stuff. Lovely. Yeah, at this point, whenever he reaches about roughly 20,000 HP, he's going to use laser, which can pretty much single-handedly kill anyone, any member of your party. But that also tells you, hey, he's almost dead, so let's cast Ultima. And we'll also cast Bahamut. 
and between those two, that should deal two rounds of 10,000, um, pretty much just killing the guy. Unless he revives the Defender Bot, which revitalizes him. This is oh so much fun. But here we go with the Bahamut. Huh, so it looks like the Defender Bot is actually immune to magic. Wow, Ultima didn't even go through, that's crazy. Anyway, physical hits, does him in easily enough. I got a Soma drop from him, that's kind of cool. Whoa! Wow. Huh. So I guess the path has been opened! But what lies beyond? And what more bosses do we have to fight? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV Ultima. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.